The definition of protocol is the accepted or established code of procedure or behaviour in any group, organisation or situation. So the protocols are rules set down that everyone should follow. We could say that the English language is a protocol, since if we need to communicate with another English-speaking person, then there would be little point in speaking French or any other language. The protocols used in a computer network system is a combination of different components. When added together, we refer to them as the Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. We tend to abbreviate this to TCP IP. So if we have a network using TCP IP protocol and you want to add a further computer to it, then it too would have to use the TCP IP to communicate with the others on that network. Modern networks are now almost exclusively based on the TCP IP suite. To connect to a TCP IP network, a host needs two pieces of information an IP address and subnet mask. This next section focuses on the basic TCP IP configuration settings. At the time of writing, the majority of IP communication which will take place will use the Internet Protocol version 4, also known as IP. V4. In the future, another version of IP will become more common. This is known as IP version 6. An introduction to this is included later in the unit, but the majority of configuration here will take place using the IP version 4. The IP address can be thought of a postal address. For example, if you send a letter to a friend, you would include, amongst other things, the name of the street and the number of the house down that street they live. There can never be two house numbers the same in that street, otherwise the letter would never arrive. This is the same with the computer network. A computer connected to a network is normally referred to as a client or host, depending upon its role. And each one must have a unique address, or the information would never arrive at the intended client or host. The easiest way to see how an IP address and subwork mask work together is to look at one. To view the IP configuration of a Windows system, we can use the command prompt and enter the command ipconfig. In our example, we can see five connections. You may find that this is different on the system that you are using. This is the Ethernet adapter. If it was a wireless adapter, the description would include wireless LAN adapter. So this is the type of connection, which I'll concentrate on the first one shown here. The link local IPv6 address is the version 6 address we spoke about earlier. Notice this address is a hexadecimal number. Not only does it contain all the numbers from 0 to 10, but also the letters A to F. This is the system IPv4 address, and it is in most cases referred to simply as the IP address. The address can vary greatly depending upon sentences, which will be introduced shortly. However, the key thing to notice at this stage is the IP address consists of four numbers, each separated by a full stop. Each of these sections are known as a noctec due to them being 8 bits in size. The subnet mask will be covered in more depth shortly, but for now only a basic definition is needed. It is also made up of four octets, or four numbers, and it too is separated by full stops. The subnet mask works with the IP address, and is used to help identify the portion of the address which is used for the network identification, and the portion of which is used for the host identification. We could think of this, of which part of the IP address is the street name, and which part of the IP address is the house number. This will become clearer as we proceed. The numbers used vary less than those used in an IP address. In most cases you will see the values 255 or 0 being used. In larger networks you may see some other values used, but these are still limited. IP networks are separated logically into subnets. In our example there are two subnets, A and B. Both subnets will remain separate, in other words data can be exchanged with each subnet but not between them, even when both are connected together through a physical or wireless connection. One subnet cannot communicate with another without some other device or host which will provide a path between them. 
can think of this as a passageway from one street to another. To create a gateway from one network to another, it would be possible to install two network cards into a PC, then join each network to the installed network cards. So the default gateway address of the network host, which provides an exit point from each of the subnets. For example, if you are working within an office LAN and wish to access the outside world, such as the internet, then your host will require details of the LAN's default gateway. Usually this is in the form of a router, which can direct the traffic out to the internet. As we have seen, an IP address consists of four octets. Each octet must be between 0 and 255. We've already looked at the binary numbers earlier, and we use transistors to represent them. But to recap, binary works on the numbers 0 and 1, or an off and on state. So let's take a series of switches. In our example, they are 8. This would represent an 8-bit number. Under this, we shall replace either a 0, if it is in its off state, or 1 if it's in on state. We shall need 8 of these. This will represent our binary number. To the right of this we will use the decimal equivalent. If we leave all the switches in the off position then this will represent the binary 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and in decimal also 0. Now if we switch on the far right switch then the binary numbers would be 7 zeros and a 1. The correct way of saying this would be 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 and also would be decimal 1. The next number to represent decimal 2 would be 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0. Remember although this looks like 10 it is not, it is a binary 2. If we then turned on the last switch so we would have 6 zeros followed by 1 1 then this would be 3. We can continue switching these switches to count in binary. To try and simplify this even further, we can say if the far right switch is on, then that will represent a 1. So we'll place a 1 above that switch. Now if we take this and double it to 2, and place this above the next switch, then double this number and put this above the next switch, and so on. So the result in each switch is double the value of the last. We have discovered that 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 binary is decimal 7. If we add the last three switches that are in the on position, it also results in 7. The really clever thing about binary is it only uses zeros and ones, and no matter what combination you choose, there can only be one combination that will result in decimal 7. We may find it a little less confusing if we convert the decimal to binary. Let's check what decimal 20 is in binary. To do this, we subtract 128 from 20. Naturally, you can't, so we'll switch this off and try the next switch that represents 64. Once again, we can't, so we'll continue with the next, then the next, so we can subtract 16 from the 20, leaving us with a balance of 4. The next switch is 8, which is too big, so we shall use the next switch, which is 4. So decimal 20 is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Once again, no other combination of these switches can result in 20. One final example, let's try and find the binary equivalent of 163. So we start with the far left switch and subtract 128. This is left on as a 1, leaving 35. We will be unable to subtract 64, but we can subtract the 32, leaving 3. So the last two switches will be left in the on position. Again, only this combination of zeros and ones will result in a decimal 163. So what is the largest 8-bit number we can have? To see this, we have to switch all the switches to the on position, then add all the numbers together, resulting in 255. Let's take a valid binary IP address. It consists of four 8-bit numbers. A total of 32 bits or four octets. Each 8-bit number is separated by a full stop. The problem in displaying IP addresses, like this, is for us humans mistakes can easily be made when handling a large number of zeros and ones as in this example. We find it much easier if we display the equivalent IP address in decimal. Let's convert each of the 8-bit numbers into decimal. We place the first binary number under the switches and only those switches that are above a 1 will be switched into the on position. If we add these two numbers together, it results in a decimal 10. 
Let's replace this with the next binary number. Once again turning the switches on for those above the ones. We can see here this makes a decimal 233. Then the next binary number. It only has one in it so it is a decimal one. Now the final binary number. Only the last two switches need to be switched. This will result in a decimal 192. Once again we shall add the full stops to complete the IP address. The subnet mask is important as it is used to indicate the network ID and the host or client ID. A subnet mask octet can be either set or not set. To set an octet it will be 255. Remember this is the largest number an octet can be. Or not set which would be zero. The combinations are 255.0.0.0 255.255.0.0 or 255.255.255.0 These are called classes, class A, B and C. So in a class A, only the first octet in the subnet mask is set. This means that only the first octet of an IP address is used for the network ID. The other three octets of the IP address is used as the host ID. In a class B, the first two octets are set, therefore the first two octets of the IP address is the network ID and the last two is the host ID. In the final example, class C, the first three octets are set in the subwet mask, so the first three octets in the IP address is the network ID and the final octet is the host ID. Remember for a host to communicate with each other, they have to be on the same network ID. So here we have a network with an ID of class A, so every host can communicate with each other. But if the ID network of a host is changed, then it will be unable to communicate with the others on the same network. Let's set the following on a class A network, giving each host an IP address and a subnet mask. We should point out at this stage that the class of a network is not only dependent upon the subnet mask, but also on a minimum and maximum IP addresses. We shall be looking at this later. Let's take the first host with an IP address of 10.200.0.23. We can see the first octet of the subnet mask is set, so this host is on a network ID of 10. The host ID is 200.0.23. Let's take the next example. Once again the first octet is a subnet mask is set, so the host is also on a network ID of 10 and the host ID is 10.0.2. The next host is also on a network ID of 10, since the first octet of the subnet mask is set. Its host ID number is 55.32.91. And finally, the same applies for the last host. It is on a network of 10, and it has a host ID of 0 0.0.63. So we could say that the network ID of the network is 10.0.0.0, rather than just saying 10. In our last example, the host on the left IP address was changed to a class B. We shall do the same now, changing it to 172.18.0.2. Look at the subnet mask. It is now 255.255.0.0. This means the first two octets are set, which means the network ID for this host has changed to 172.18. And with it changing, it will be unable to communicate with the host on the network ID of 10.0.0.0. There are some other limitations with IP addresses which we shall look at later during the coursework. It is not expected for you to totally understand IP addresses and subnet masks at this stage. It would be beneficial to watch this video again or seek out further explanation.